Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hesed Sabbath Fellowship. We are not meeting because the building's locked. We're shopping for a new place, and so call first, 612-315-6778. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We try to solve problems in non-disparate ways. We're Beth Hesed Sabbath Fellowship. This one's a tough one. This one is going to go against the common thought, which is that we're going to come against the Antichrist and he's coming out of Europe and he's going to have 10 nations in Europe and it, it's not working out so well. OK, um, and I'll give you different reasons, but I think it's 10 big tech horns. OK, uh, the horns are listed in Daniel and, and then Revelation. Um, I think it's the mind of the beast and we'll show you that. You know what? You're smart people. I'm reasonably smart. I have good smart friends, though, and we'll work it out together. Um, and so I owe a thank you to John Haller for help on this one and to Benjamin Baruch. So anyway, what is truth? Who determines truth? And is tech responsible for determining truth? Because tech is ungodly. <laughs> so the main thing is, as you deal with the disinformation dozen and other people like that, that I happen to love dearly, um, be aware that um, that it's going to be interesting moving forward. And I think that's why big tech is more important than say the 10 European nations that everybody's been talking about all these years. And I'll give you the exact thing. Um, so going back years ago, the big uh, book and movie series was the Left Behind series. And Gordon Curry is the actor that played Nikolai. Uh, and he was supposed to be the Antichrist. <laughs> He's a nice guy. He's friends with Brad Pitt. Maybe Brad Pitt is the Antichrist. No, I'm kidding, just kidding. Um, and so the general consensus from Left Behind and other authors and other people is that the Antichrist was, uh, yeah, I'm saying that Glenn Curry was born 925 of 1965, so that makes him the Antichrist. No, it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, the EU was always the 10 heads of the Antichrist and that this Antichrist guy was gonna come along and unite them and things like that. I don't see it happening, okay? I don't see that, I, I see the opposite. In the Bible, I see ethnos versus ethnos, which means ethnic group versus ethnic group and kingdom versus kingdom. I don't see them united. I see something else uniting. And so uh, the main thing is, if you're looking at Jerry Jenkins and saying, well, he wrote The Chosen, so he must be The Chosen. No, Jerry Jenkins is a confirmed gambler. He gambled aggressively with James McDonald. Uh, they've been defrocked, basically. James McDonald had to resign. Uh, it's all about the money. Jerry writes fiction so that he can get money to gamble, okay? He's that addicted to gambling. And if you wonder about it, then go check out Julie Roy's with her report. Um, Jerry writes his crud to feed his gambling addiction. It's that bad. And he admits it, that he is a gambling, he doesn't admit openly anymore that he's a gambling addict, but that he's a fiction writer, okay? So um, he's been admitting that for years. And also, I went to a Jan Markell conference back in 2005, probably 2004 through 2006, and Jerry got up in front of everybody and they asked him a question. Um, do you think anybody can be saved after the uh, rapture? And he said, no. And he really could care less. He's a fiction writer. He, he doesn't know any better. And so when you're listening to him, remember, he's a gambler. Okay, that's his life. And, um, and, and Tim LaHaye was a wonderful man. But just keep that in mind. So as you see these theories being trotted out, remember, some of the men trotting them out are good men, but uh, not Jerry Jenkins. So the Antichrist, it's always been thought that his 10 kingdoms would be in Europe. And it's all Europe confederacy and things like that, but it's never worked out with the EU, okay? It just hasn't. Or that the Pope would be behind it too. And, and the people, we'll call them the reformers that started uh, modern Protestantism, really felt the Antichrist was going to be the Pope. Okay, so um, this is another theory, which is the formation of the 10 nation confederation under revived Turkish Islamic, the caliphate. I've thought about that over the years too. It, it's interesting. So the main thing is, um, I don't think, even though all the types and shadows make sense in terms of, if you look way on the upper right-hand side there, that is the EU parliament and it looks, looks a lot like the Tower of Babel. So just keep that in mind that, that Let's keep on looking, okay? Let's keep on studying. And there is also the issue of guys like Sad who, um, and whether you agree with him on everything or not, or even like him at all, 
Um, he, he has made statements that Berlin is basically cursed and the Antichrist will rise from Berlin. Uh, it's his political headquarters. Very interesting. So there are reasons why Berlin makes a good Antichrist headquarters. Um, this is Museum Island kind of in the middle here. And this is where Obama gave his 416 of 19 speech, 46 rather, and that was the head of the year. That's Nissan one of 2019, okay? And there's also the Pergamum Museum there in, on the Museum Island. And then also a new Chrislam church, we'll call it, okay? They're on the island. It's just evil, people. There's the old Berlin Wall right next door to it, and then the Reichstag, and then Brandenburg Gate, which has horses, four horses with the chariot. And um, it's just very similar to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So yeah, I don't have a problem with people saying that Berlin is cursed and that something's coming out of there. Um, it's, a lot is going on in Berlin. Um, and it is the seat of Satan, so go ahead and verify it by looking at Revelation 2.13, and you'll see that that was um, excavated out of Turkey, Pergamos, Turkey, and then brought up to Berlin, and it kicked off World War I, World War II, and maybe World War III. It's being revitalized right now. Uh, the other theory that I've been working on over the years has been 10 nations, but they're conglomerates of nations across the world. It still doesn't work, okay? And yeah, there's a new world order and everybody's talking about it, but but I I don't think that's actually how it's going to work out. And, and, and you know, you, you, the United States and Russia are going to be the two biggest players no matter what. So let's look at something else. Once again, as I mentioned, Martin Luther, many other of the reformers uh, immediately came out and said, the Antichrist is the Pope. Okay, fine. Um, and here's a, a picture of the Pope being, I don't know. So anyway, um, this has been the thought over the years by a lot of different people. Mike Bennett uh, espouses it. This Ro Revelation 13 beast incorporates elements of the four beasts of Daniel 7. But again, the 10 horns represent 10 revivals of the Roman Empire through history. Okay, I disagree with him. Um, and, and so I'm going to go a different direction. So... Which is it? Ten European kings or a big ten cloud tech coming against us? I'm going to argue as we move through Revelation 17 that the woman riding this beast and uh, are the ten kings or the ten whatever's horns, we'll call them, uh, is really riding tech. And I'm going to try to prove it to you. We'll see if I can do it. So once again, we do the philosophy of eschatology. We try to actually use the Bible properly. And also, some things come to light later in the, these times. We're close to the end, people. I mean, uh, I keep track of a lot of things. And um, the information is hockey sticking. It's just going right up the graph. And so just be aware of that. And, and the news, the way, okay, I work in tech, okay, and I know cloud services very, very well. And, and so as I see the news coming through from that and match it up with prophecy in the Bible, I'm seeing that it's Big Ten tech. Okay, so let's, let's deal with first the word itself. So horns in Hebrew is Karen and horn, power, pride, instrument of music. Yes, it is also a shofar. And in Revelation, it's Keras, and that's Greek uh, 2768, properly of animals. Yeah, okay, horns come from animals. And uh, strength and courage, horns of the altar. Okay, I want you to see that. It's also part of that. So the animal's horns give it protection and represent its strength. Horns are also recognized uh, as a danger in Israel's agrarian culture. An ox that gored a person would be destroyed. And if the owner knew the ox tended to thrust, thrust its horns uh, he, and he didn't keep it confined, he would be punished. Okay, so that's Exodus 21. Um, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously. So keep in mind the horn is symbolic of Yeshua returning because the horn will be blasted in a tekiah gadola. It's a big tekiah call. So that's a long, unbroken call and gets louder. So the Lord is my rock, my shield and horn, power of my salvation. Um, so, and, and I want you to be able to be aware of this because this helps. And this is part of the reason why you come to my site, uh, my YouTube videos, is that when you see this, when you see horns, I want you to think of the altar 
which was part of the temple life daily, you know, two, three times a day in Jerusalem, first century. And also, if you were a Jew of that time frame, you would want your casket, so to speak, your ossuary, to have horns on it because it re resembled where your life came from in heaven under, and I'll show you the verses, don't worry, there they are at Revelation 6, 9 through 11, and where you're going back to. So um, in Judaism, we would believe that there's a goof in heaven and it really sounds like it when we read revelation 6 9 through 11 that that's where the souls come from so when the lamb broke the fifth seal i saw underneath the altar the goof the souls of those who had been put to death for proclaiming the word of god that is for bearing witness they cried out in a loud voice sovereign ruler hakodesh that's holy uh, the true one how long will it be before you judge the people living on the earth and avenge our blood each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants should be reached of their brothers who would be killed just as they had been. So what I want you to be aware of is that the soul comes from this, it goes back to this, and that everything is uh, everything that's important to the Jews, life, death, whatever else, is ro revolving around these horns of the altar, whether the physical brazen altar or the incense altar, in this case, um, their altar where they're buried and they're waiting for their resurrection. So here's more pictures of the horns of the altar. And, and so basically um, the symbology in death in these ossuaries. So keep that in mind. And here's another one. So think like a first century Jew. Horns belong on altars and horns are not, well, they're connected to life and death. Okay, so now let's move forward here. So they're not connected to ethnos, which would be ethnic groups, or basileia, which would be kingdoms, in Daniel 7 or in Revelation 13, 1 through 4. So let's read the verses and see what I'm getting at. Ten horns. After this, I looked in the night visions, and there before me was a fourth animal, Rome, dreadful and horrible, extremely strong, and with great iron teeth. It devoured, crushed, and stamped its feet on what was left, and it was different from all the animals that had gone before it, and it had ten horns, those ten powerful spots that are reminiscent again of the altar, uh, whether, you know, where you're born or where you're birthed or where you die. When I was considering the horns and another horn sprang up among them, a little one before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. In this horn were eyes like human eyes and a mouth speaking arrogantly. That's the Antichrist, we would call him the beast. And as I watched, thrones were set in place and the ancient one took his seat to judge. And I would argue that's on Yom Kippur. That's when he judges. He always waits all the way through the festival of uh, Rosh Hashanah, all the way the 10 days to the end of uh, Yom Kippur. And then he judges at the end of that time frame. Let's move on to Revelation 13, which is, I saw a beast come up from out of the sea with 10 horns and seven heads. On its horns were 10 royal crowns and on its heads, blasphemous names, tech companies, I'm arguing. The beast, which I saw was like a leopard, but with feet like those of a bear and a mouth like the a mouth of a lion. To it, the dragon gave its power, its throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast appeared to have received a fatal wound, but his fatal wound was healed and the whole earth followed after the beast in amazement. They worshiped the dragon. That would be Satan, but it's also China. <laughs> so because he had given his authority to the beast and they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? So let's go through these, these creatures again. The leopard, that's Germany. Okay, the bear, that's Russia. The lion, that's England. So there are these symbols that match up then and now the horns are interesting, and I'm not going to argue that it's 10 nations that are 10 horns. I'm going to argue that it's going to be 10 tech companies, big tech, okay? So when I looked and I saw four horns, powers, so I asked the angel who was speaking with me, what are these? And he answered me, these are the, these are the 10 horns or the horns, the powerful Gentile nations, according to this guy, this is the Amplified Bible, that have scattered Judah, the southern kingdom, Israel and the northern kingdom and Jerusalem, the capital city of Judah. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, what are these horns and craftsmen coming to do? And he said, these are the horns powers that have scattered Judah so that no man raises his head because of the suffering inflicted by the Gentile nations. That's his opinion. But these craftsmen have come to terrify them and make them panic and throw down the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. So that's Zechariah 1. 
Very interesting, very prophetic. And then moving on to Daniel 8, 3, you who self-confidently rejoice in Lodabar in nothing, uh, words that say nothing, though who say, have we not by our own strength taken Karnaim strength for ourselves. Okay, so that's Amos 6, 13. Interesting, okay? So I just want you to see these verses and, and we'll see another horn verse in just a little bit here. And I said to the arrogant, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn of self-glorification. Uh, that's his opinion. Do not lift up your defiant and aggressive horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. That's Psalm 75. And once again, it was Amos 6, 13 that I just read a moment ago. The last one is Daniel 8, 3. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, there in front of me was a canal. On the canal stood a lone ram. Um, that's the Medo-Persian Empire, which had two horns. The two horns were high, but one, Persia, was higher than the other media, and the other one came up last. I'm arguing that that is a picture of the Medo-Persian Empire, but also a picture of um, uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, and the Eastern Orthodox Church that have split. And so one is bigger, the Roman Catholic Church is bigger. And so that would be a picture of what the Pope is going to be doing at the end. And then um, basically the Antichrist is going to come along and smash the system in Daniel 8 and take over at that point in time. So, but the male goat magnified himself exceedingly. And when he was young and strong, the great horn, that's Alexander, but also the Antichrist, suddenly broken and in its place there came up four prominent horns that did happen with greece among whom the kingdom was divided one toward each one of the four winds of heaven out of one of them antiochus the fourth epiphanes came forth a rather small horn but one of the irreverent presumption and profane pride yeah oh there you go that's the antichrist which grew exceedingly powerful toward the south toward the east toward the beautiful land that's israel and in my vision this horn grew up to the host of heaven and caused some of the host and some of the stars to fall to the earth and it trampled on them. Okay, that's Daniel 8, 8 through 10. Interesting. So that's the horn. And then we have one more and we're going to go through this a few times. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, that's God's people, with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus who were martyred. When I saw her, I wondered in amazement, but the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. So those are the verses that help you. And here's what started me down this road. I started looking at the Google stuff because I Google a lot and I do DuckDuckGo also. Um, but Google has changed its logo and it looks a lot like a logo that I've seen from Rebecca Sterling. And you can see that logo in the middle, but that's Google on, on the left and Google on the right. It looks like a 666, people, okay? And so, once again, I want to show you that Mike Bennett is saying the beast incorporates the elements of the four beasts of Daniel 7. But again, the 10 horns represents the 10 revivals of the Roman Empire through history. I'm arguing no, no. It, it is more like tech. And Google is more like 666. And their logo is a clue to that, okay? So, once again, I can you can blame John Haller for this information. Um, or Benjamin Baruch. Um, and so this is an open letter to the Biden-Harris administration from John Haller during his prophecy update the other day here. And our broken information ecosystem with unaccountable tech giants serving as gatekeepers poisons the public discord course and corrodes our capacity for progress. Indeed, President Obama recently identified the lack of a common baseline of fact as the single biggest threat to our democracy. And this crisis of truth is not merely a long-term problem. It is one with immediate implications for your administration's top priorities and governing agenda. Okay, so what they're trying to do is make the tech giants more accountable and be stronger gatekeepers to prevent the poisoning of the public discourse. Okay, interesting. So I'm arguing tech giants. Let's go to the other side of the page, which is, you know, who's more frightening, the tech giants? <laughs> Or India. Oh, India has 140 nukes and Russia has 6,500. You know, who's more frightening? Can you come up with 10 nations or even 10 regions that work for this? No, you really can't. I mean, you really can only go Russia, US. And the other 10, I mean, China's important, obviously. We don't know how many nukes they really have. But the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, North Korea, is, is that the big 10? Not a, not a chance, okay? So keep that in mind as I keep on hammering away on big tech. 
So once again, I looked at this uh, uh, Rebecca Sterling video, video number five, the stadium, and and um, man, oh man, oh man, I just started looking at that 666 that she had all over on the page there, and I thought, oh, that looks like the Google symbol. So it's just interesting. I wanted to cite that one more time. I can't say that I always agree with her because she has a certain disease that causes her to forget certain things. So she wrote all of these things down in 1999, but her opinions today are rather interesting, but not necessarily accurate. But some of what she saw back then is highly accurate. So let's look at some 10 big 10 uh, companies, okay? Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, Facebook, Walmart, the Chinese companies that are so powerful. Tesla factors in there too. Tencent is one of those, Alibaba Group. You know, so these are powerful worldwide companies that wield much more power and influence your life more than 10 regional hubs um, or 10 European countries, which would be the, the thought from years ago. So I argue this is the issue with the 10 horns, the 10 power centers. Okay, so now let's continue on. And, and so I want you to see the breakdown in the Greek a little bit and, and understand the words a little bit more. So once again, um, Benjamin Baruch said, that's the mind of the beast. So when you're reading this with me, think of this is the mind of the beast. So um, destruction goes and the 10 horns, which you saw, 10 kings are who a kingdom not yet received, but authority as kings one hour to receive along with the beast these one mind that's the big thing okay uh no me okay and so uh or no mo and so that is not your brain your organ the brain that is a function of a brain like a programmed hive mentality cloud computer system okay so that's the word g1106 it's not an organ it's it's not a person's brain it's the function of a brain Okay, and I'm arguing that the kingdoms are listed there, but they have not yet received authority as kings. These tech kings are kings, people, okay? And, and look at this too. One hour they received the authority. You couldn't do that with countries. You couldn't get them to get together. You just couldn't. You couldn't take 10 European nations or 10 worldwide conglomerates and get them together. Big tech could divvy up everything in a matter of minutes. In one hour, they could do it, okay? So then, so there's the... The nomen and the nome or nomo, um, and so that is very very interesting. That word, uh, it's it's discernment which determines its function. Okay, I sell programming for a living and I sell cloud services. That's programming people. That's what it is. Okay, so it makes sense, and and you know I love Spiro so Zodiades. And so I want to cite what he's talking about. And this is from his Bible, the Keyword Study Bible. So, you know, um, generally meaning capacity of judgment, faculty of discernment, that's what computers do, people, okay? They make determinations. As far as conduct is determined, uh, let's see here, continuing on these two, although connected must be distinguished. The distinction cannot be that one of the organ being noose, mind, or nome, its function. Nome is discernment, which determines conduct, as I stated. Noose, mind, refers only to thinking without direction. It signifies consciousness, mind, opinion, thought. Nome can be synonymous with will. Um, and so Revelation 17, 13, which is critical for what we're reading, okay? Um, God's direction, inclination, when referring to pleasure, purpose, other things like that, and it matches people very, very well with cloud computing. It really does. Okay, so faculty of knowing, this is from Thayer's, faculty of knowing, mind, reason, thought, or known, one's mind, view, judgment, opinion, and then it cites Revelation 17, 13 there. It's programming, okay? Mind concerning what ought to be done, resolve, purpose, intention, decree without thy consent. Oh, that's tech giants, people, okay? That is. So I'm arguing that the woman, this harlot, is riding the 10 horns of tech, okay? And so let's read Revelation 17, 16 through 18 and see if it works. And the 10 horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the prostitute, this woman, and will make her desolate and naked. 
and that's basically the Catholic Church, okay? Stripped of her power and influence and will eat her flesh and completely consume her with fire for God has put in their hearts to carry out his purpose by agreeing together. Yeah, that's not a great translation anywhere, um, but that's nome. Um, and that's, I argue that's Big Ten tech because they agree together to surrender their kingdom to the beast at some point in time until the prophetic words of God will be fulfilled. The woman whom you saw is the great city, which reigns over and dominates and controls the kings and political leaders of the earth, Revelation 17, 16 through 18. It works, people. It works very, very well. So who's <laughs> controlling your free speech right now? Is it India? Is it even China? Is it um, Pakistan? No, it's, it's big tech, okay? And, and so it's Twitter and Apple and Amazon and Facebook and Google, and, and they're choking your free speech, okay? And so everywhere you look right now, it's big tech. So when you look at what the horns are, I'm arguing it's big tech. And I'm arguing that Be Benjamin Baruch is right. That's the mind of the beast. It is. It's a hive mind. And so also, who are the guys that are flying around up into space and building tunnels underneath the ground so they can run and hide and things like that? It's your tech overlords. Uh, they, they jet the wealthy to the space for the sixth seal. So as things start shaking up in the world and the asteroids are coming down, they're going to go up or they're going to go down, okay? And they've already got their plans made. It's the tech giants that are much more frightening than any nation that has two nukes. OK, so once again, um, I'm going to kind of go through some of the names and players from Re Rebecca Sterling. So once again, the video is Skid Davidson, a voice crying in the wilderness. He has a, the video series from her. And so you can just go back and watch it. But she, her 1999 vision, she saw Barack Obama and his family. She saw Pope Francis. She saw the Antichrist. And she won't tell me who he is, but uh, I de deduced it, I believe. Um, General Green and his family kicked it off on Av 9 of 2014. That's about seven years ago, people. And so the players, the players that she kind of described, the Antichrist, okay, um, the false prophet, Gog, she described Barack Obama quite well, okay? And he's buried in Israel, so keep that in mind um, eventually. Uh, she talked about the king angel of the abyss, nine foot tall horse-like locusts that are running around, that's Revelation 9, 200,000 cavalry soldiers, that's the sixth trumpet from Revelation 9. The Illuminati are going to be here on the planet, but also I'm arguing the big tech horns. And Satan and his fallen angels, they're gonna be around, they're gonna be cast out from heaven and it's going to be horrific when you have all of these evil people going what are we going to have we're going to have the 144,000 we're going to have the two witnesses we're going to have the holy ones we're going to have angels and archangels we're going to have god we're going to have yeshua returning we're going to have in between ones that really aren't in one camp or the other camp right now okay and that's the people that we want to talk to and so I'm arguing that um, at some point in time the in between are judged that's on Yom Kippur and then the fates are sealed Okay, so this is Catherine Austin Fitz, and she's saying that the tech giants will completely control you. Uh, they have a control system already planned out. It's a slavery system, uh, controls human resources and robot resources, worldwide ID tracking system. It ain't 10 nations doing this. It is 10 tech giants doing this. So she claims big tech, tech uh, which would be cloud and telecom, Big military, satellites, big pharma, drugs, injections, modifications of DNA, big media, propaganda, big banks, crypto fake currencies, things like that. Big China, I'm arguing. Big church, I'm putting that in there too, peace and safety. Big human slavery. And I put it all together in my little chart here so that you can see really big, big tech owns other things. They own satellites. They own big pharma. Uh, they're, they're in bed with all of these things. Big media, they're in bed together. And it really starts out with big tech because they have all the power. Big woke, yeah, they're part of it too. Then big banks, big China, big church. Some big churches are owned by companies, okay? It's hard to believe, but the companies came in and gave them money to be able to keep on going. And they're more of a, well, whatever. So big slavery, big cosmos. Big cosmos is gonna factor in too. So just be aware of all of these things, all these factors. And big China and other entities are gathering data. And uh, John Haller mentioned to me today, these tech giants are building the most magnificent facilities to store all this data about us. Okay, so just keep that in mind. China's doing it, and we're on. We're not happy with that. But what about the tech giants? 
Okay, so once again, Obama seems to be Gog Begog, so keep that in mind. Uh, it, it, it doesn't seem to change. The Antichrist is more interested in world power. Gog is more interested in killing Jews. Okay, that's his goal. And then the Pope is going to do a lot of work to get to the point where he can hand things off to the Antichrist. And we are in the birth pangs. We're moving along into the tribulation, the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. And will the big ten, big, big ten companies, the tech companies, work with the Antichrist to control us? Yes, they are already. So as always, I've mentioned the birth pangs listed in Matthew 24 sound a lot like the seals. And I believe we're in the third seal right now with uh, inflation going through the roof. The fourth seal is a whole lot of death. Um, I have friends that argue it's a, a power over a fourth of the earth. We'll see who's right. Um, and so the timelines are interesting because the Antichrist is going to remain quiet. But big tech is dominating right now. And the, the false prophet, the Pope, is doing a lot. And even my Catholic friends admit that he is part of this. Um, and so um, basically things are getting worse and they're hockey sticking. So are we going in soon? I don't know. I don't know. Then seal four, as we mentioned, seal five is martyrdom. I have a plan for how seal five works out. If I state it right now, the video would be banned. So I'll figure out a, a convenient way to say it without getting in trouble with the sensors, big tech sensors. So we're getting close to this time frame when we have a wedding. So get your garments clean, people. And that's repentance, and that's keeping them clean and getting ready for the time that Yeshua shows up. So that's that. Thank you for your time. I think it's big tech people, and other people are starting to agree with me because I ran a few, by a few people. So be blessed. Have a great Shabbat, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.